I want this picture to be a commentary on modern conditions, stark realism, the problems that confront the average man. But with a little sex. A little, but I don't want to stress it. I want this picture to be a document. I want to hold a mirror up to life. I want this to be a picture of dignity, a true canvas of the suffering of humanity. But with a little sex. With a little sex in it. Before Preston Sturgis was one of Hollywood's greatest writers and directors, he was a man with no direction. He was born Edmund Preston Biden in Chicago, Illinois in 1898. He took the surname of his stepfather, Solomon Sturgis, when his mother remarried. Preston Sturgis' father was a business person. And so uh, half, of his, half of him was drawn to this world and influenced by this paternal or as an adoptive paternal influence. And then the other half of him was very heavily influenced by the experiences he had with his mother, who was a, um, a follower of the dancer Isadora Duncan. And so he, uh, Preston Sturgis, as a young person, ended up schlepping around the world, around the Western world in Europe, with his mother. And so this is one of the uh, basis of his, of his sense of humor, is, is where he's, he's able to represent this kind of upper class, but at the same time, he, he can very efficiently mock them. After his first marriage failed, a broken-hearted Sturgis wrote his first play, The Guinea Pig, in response to how he felt exploited by his first wife. The play was released on Broadway and received rave reviews. His success, however, was short-lived, as his subsequent plays received increasingly worse reviews. In 1932, following his second divorce, Sturgis found employment working with Universal Studios as a screenplay writer. After his hit comedy, Strictly Dishonorable, his work on The Invisible Man did not satisfy Universal, and he was dropped from the company. Off salary, he wrote the screenplay The Power and the Glory, which he sold for cash and continued to bounce around between different production companies. Uh, he became uh, a very accomplished scriptwriter in Hollywood in the 1930s, uh, but had greater ambitions. Uh, so in, 1930, in 1940, uh, he sold his script for The Great McGinty to the studio for one dollar so he could direct it. I am the Reform Party, who do you think? Since when? Since always. In this town, I'm all the parties. Do you think I'm going to starve every time they change administrations? Well, and where does Jarvis come in with his Purity League? Don't ask me so many questions, will you? I ask if you want to be reform mayor, you can give me a plain answer. Well, sure, I guess so. All right, you're in. You'll have to kiss a lot of babies, squeeze a lot of meats, wear your old clothes. They don't want no dudes after tilling gas. I'll tell Jarvis about it. Oh, another thing. You gotta get married right away. What do you mean, get married right away? What do you think it means? Don't make me say everything twice again, will you? Women got the vote now. Maybe you didn't hear about it. They don't like bachelors. Oh, they don't, huh? Well, if they don't like them, they can lump them. What's the matter with you? Are you nuts? No. I'm playing hard to get. Daniel, don't you know what marriage is? Don't you know that marriage has always been the most beautiful, uh, most beautiful setup between the sexes? Don't you know that a man without a wife is like a, like a coat without a pants, like a pig without a pork? Why, the marriage is the most, the most, uh... All right, why don't you try it? Because I ain't running for mayor. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't neither. Poke that in your pig. After much determination, he had finally become a director and was the first to have the credit written and directed by before his name. His first effort at directing paid off. In 1941, he won the first ever Academy Award given for Best Original Screenplay. The following four years, he created his most remarkable work releasing a handful of films, now considered American classics. Um, by the mid-1940s, uh, he was every bit as accomplished as a film director, uh, as a screenwriter. Uh, clearly, the scripts that he wrote for The Lady Eve and The Miracle of Morgan's Creek are among the funniest scripts ever written in Hollywood. Screwball, which takes its um, name from uh, the sort of unpredictability or um, screwiness of some of the plots that were characteristic of these romantic comedies of the 1930s. He was courted uh, uh, in 1944 
um, when he quit Paramount Pictures, probably a huge mistake in, in probably in not realizing that the uh, constraints of the studio system were as advantageous to um, creative talent very often as they were um, restricting. After his third wife left him, he was subjected to a string of bad luck. He was plagued by unemployment as studios were increasingly unwilling to hire him, finding his scripts lacking and his personality difficult to get along with. As the 40s came to a close, Preston Sturgis's great success began to diminish. He um, had a, a lot of uh, personal issues too, including um, probably heavy drinking and a sort of dissolute lifestyle of the 1940s. In 1955, the last film Sturgis directed, The Diary of Major Thompson, was released in France. In 1959, he was hired to write his autobiography, The Events Leading Up to My Death. Ironically, with the book half finished, he suffered a fatal heart attack in August of the same year. Sturgis did have a, a, a moment in um, history in which he was more or less forgotten, which is confounding to think about now. Uh, he was one of the most successful, um, highest paid um, directors of all time. Today, Preston Sturgis is known as one of America's greatest filmmakers and the father of the American screwball comedy. Certainly nothing has happened to spoil my friendship with your brother. Being with him will remind me of you. Well, you see... What now? He isn't exactly my brother. No. He isn't exactly your brother. No. Hello! Oh, shut up. He, he's my husband. <laughs>